The legato technique has been used by many guitarists to create smooth fluid lines and facilitate blazing speed as well. Hi, I'm Troy Stetna, and in this lesson we're going to look closely at the legato technique and how it's used by masters such as Joe Satriani, Steve Vai, and Alan Holdsworth. As guitarists, we achieve a legato sound with mainly three techniques. There's the hammer-on, the pull-off, and the slide. It's interesting how many guitarists don't feel the need to practice legato playing after they get the basic moves down. They figure, if I can pick every note of a lick, then surely I can play it with hammers and poles. But this is definitely not the case. Sure, we all know lots of typical cliched licks that use some hammers and poles, like these, or this. But not nearly as many players have a real command over the legato technique, and that's the goal of this lesson. We're going to start off with a few exercises that will let you know right away where you stand. The first one is based off the old familiar one, two, three, four exercise that lots of players have used. But this time, we're going to have a few twists. You're starting on a different finger each time, and you're only picking once for each string. Here's how it looks. And at this point, we shift our hand up one fret and continue the pattern. And that's once through the entire cycle. Then you shift up a fret and continue on until you reach the 12th fret. Exercise two is the triplet version of exercise one. But instead of using your strongest fingers, one, two, and three, here we're going to use two, three, and four, like this. Number three is the descending version of number one. This one will really separate the men from the mice. It goes like this. And exercise four is the triplet version of number three. Remember to use fingers two, three, and four. With all four of these exercises, you should continue that pattern all the way up to the 12th fret and back down if you really want to give yourself a workout. <laughs> Practice these every day if possible and always use a metronome. Remember, these exercises are a serious workout, so take breaks when you need them because your left hand is going to get pretty sore. A very common application of the legato technique is to play scalar runs using three notes per string. This is a good way to get all four fingers involved in the legato process. Let's start with an ascending G major scale in triplets. Pick only once for each new string. Now slide up to the next position and come down with pull-offs. Strive for a smooth sound and a consistent volume throughout. You can turn this lick into a great exercise too by continuing up the fretboard to every position of the G major scale. You'd essentially be playing through the modes of G major like this. One rut that players tend to get into with legato playing is letting the fingers dictate the rhythms. In other words, if they're playing three notes per string, they always play triplets. If two notes per string, they may play eighth or sixteenth notes, etc. It's important to be able to place the accent anywhere in the legato phrase. This will free you up to use any rhythm you want. So let's start by playing the G major scale we just played. 
but we'll play it this time in sixteenth notes instead of triplets. Sounds like this. One, two, three, four. <laughs> It's a little harder than it seems, especially at faster tempos, but it's an essential skill to develop. Now, let's try playing an A minor pentatonic scale with two notes per string, but we'll do it in a triplet rhythm. It sounds like this. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Remember that this line should feel like triplets, with the pulse appearing on each downbeat. One, two, three, four. This idea is very crucial, so don't neglect it. Practice these two examples until you can really feel where the accent should be. Many times when descending through the strings, players will use the hammer-on from nowhere technique for improved speed and uniformity of the sound. This works best with a distorted tone. The concept is pretty simple. When you're moving from one string down to a lower string, you don't need to use the pick. Instead, hammer down on the fret with your fretting finger. Here's how it sounds with an A minor pentatonic scale. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Some players will also use this technique when ascending, but it's more difficult because you have to time the hammer-on with the release of another finger. Whereas when you're descending, you don't have that problem. So let's check out some licks that make use of these concepts. The first one is a nice 16th note descending lick in E minor that repeats an octave lower. You pick once at the beginning, and that's it. One, two, three, four. Here's that one a little slower. This next one in A minor uses many different rhythms. One, two, three, four. And here's that one, slowed down a bit. Here's one that mixes A Dorian with the A Blues scale. One, two, three, four. And here's that one, slower. And here's one in D minor that uses several slides to change positions. One, two, three, four. And here it is slow. Another common application of legato is the one string technique, where you traverse the neck along one string using nothing but hammers, poles, and slides. Hendrix used this technique quite often, as did Stevie Ray. Here's the basic idea applied to a G major pentatonic scale on the G string. One, two, three, four. Players like to use this technique with sort of a rhapsodic rhythm, which can create a slithery, kind of sinuous effect. You just basically pick a scale, pick a string, and let your fingers do the walking. Here's an example with a G mixolydian line. Well, that wraps it up for this lesson. I hope you've learned a new appreciation for the legato technique and have fun putting it to use.